A magic sphere gives its owners a ticket to a beautiful world filled with mysterious creatures and amazing views from a bird's eye view. In this world, no one ages and everyone can gain the ability to fly. But why then does everyone dream of getting out of there as soon as possible? And will the main characters manage to do it? Having attacked a Spanish ship, the pirates deliver to their captain Elizabeth Bonnie, a huge chest, expecting to see millions of gold coins in it. But instead of jewelry in the chest, turns out to be a single glass ball, inside which Bonnie notices the shining face of a girl. Frightened, the captain of the pirate ship decides to get rid of the artifact. But as soon as she pulls the trigger, the ship is illuminated by a bright flash, and it disappears. Two hundred years pass. In the streets of London, a group of teenagers play a show for rich gentlemen to steal their purses. The operation is led by the musician Peter watching from the roof. He gives his friends clues by means of melodies on the flute. Having finished the mission, the teenagers return to the lair of their mentor Jimmy, who gave the homeless guys a house. This time, Jimmy assigns the pupils a new mission the thieves must rob the Harbottle Antique Museum. Realizing what this means, the guys refuse to give up the dangerous scheme, and only Peter supports the mentor, promising to cope. After thinking, Jimmy cancels the operation. He asks Peter to forget about his request and not to take risk. But the same night, a stubborn boy is going to rob the museum to win the respect of the mentor. Jimmy meets with the customer, for whom he must rob the Harbottle Museum, and reminds him of his condition as a reward. The leader of thieves wants to regain his place in London society. Having finished talking, Jimmy decides to visit the underlings, but instead of them, he discovers fakes in the beds. Meanwhile, the owners of the abandoned bedroom begin their operation to break into the Harbottle Museum. In the midst of the robbery, Jimmy shows up on the doorstep. The man leaves the discussion for later, but for now he orders the bags to be filled and prepares to flee. Jimmy himself heads for the museum's secret vault. Peter sees the chest in Jimmy's hands, and to open it, the guy goes back to the hall for lockpicks, but the man easily opens the lock without that and frees the glass orb. Jimmy picks up the sphere to take a closer look, but at that moment he stumbles and drops the orb. The store is illuminated by a bright flash, and when Peter returns to the vault, neither Jimmy nor his friends are there. Peter returns to the orphanage with the balloon, and within a couple hours a customer comes to pick it up. Hearing that Jimmy is gone, the stranger leaves, but Peter goes after him. Peter sneaks into the customer's mansion, but he gets caught and Old Man Flood tries to find out where Jimmy has disappeared to. Once the boy tells him about the explosion, Richard Flood admits that the glass ball is a portal, and his friends have been transported to another world. He can bring them back home, but to do so, Peter must give the old man the orb, which is activated by knocking. Peter manages to escape and goes back to the orphanage to activate the glass orb and make things right. Flood doesn't have time to stop the guy. A bright flash goes off across the room and Peter disappears. Finding himself in an unusual world, Peter notices a column of dark smoke in the distance and heads towards his friends. The teens seem to hear their buddy approaching, but instead they are surrounded by the very pirates who found the pearl 200 years ago. Peter finds only the remnants of his belongings and manages to spot the pirates taking his crew away with Jimmy. Fortunately, the teenager finds Lisa, his friend who managed to hide from the kidnappers. While discussing what happened, the boys notice a pack of forest fairies coming at them and running away from them, the teenagers stumble upon an Indian tribe. Captain Elizabeth Bonney considers the guests. The pirates decide what to do with the teens, but Jimmy bravely stands up for his charges, risking his own life. This impresses Elizabeth, and she asks the hero to introduce himself. To look more serious, Jimmy gives the captain another name, James Hook. The Indians bring Peter and Lisa to the tribe and invite them to stay. But the teenagers are going to search for their friends to save them from the pirates. Bonnie invites Hook into the cabin and tells him that they are on planet Earth, but in another galaxy. Elizabeth reveals another secret to Jimmy. She shows him the magic dust of forest fairies, with which you can fly. The captain invites the guests to join her and together destroy the Indians in order to gain power over the forest fairies and become the rulers of Neverland. To finally convince Hook, Elizabeth applies her feminine charms to him. Falling asleep in a hammock, Peter dreams of forest fairies and a burning forest, but the boy quickly forgets about everything, worried about his friends. Aya Tiger Lily, the chief's daughter, notices Peter's anxiety, and she asks him to stay there is no way out of this world, and if he goes to save his friends, 
pirates will find their tribe and disaster will happen. Peter refuses to give up, and he suggests that Lisa escape by hiding in the fishing boats. The teens manage to carry out the plan, and within hours they are sailing towards the pirate ship. Once on deck, Peter and Lisa find their friends, but noticing that Jimmy is not among them, Peter returns to rescue his mentor. Peter's help turns out to be of no use to Jimmy. Seeing a guy with a gun, he climbs out of Bonnie's bed and asks Peter to put the gun down and go over to the pirate's side. A gullible Peter puts the gun down, but Starkey immediately grabs it and the pirates plan to execute the intruder after he gives up the others. Jimmy tries to protect the boy, but Peter no longer believes his mentor. He jumps into the water and swims to the boat. Fox, who has returned for his friend, is also about to jump in, but does not have time. The pirate's blade stabs him in the chest. Peter returns to the Indians, taking the punishment for his escape. He has to admit that everything that happened to them is his fault. The chief of the tribe learns about the dreams that Peter sees, and he asks the boy to draw pictures from his visions. Recognizing the man in the cloak in the drawing, Peter is about to go to the place, hoping to find a way home. Bonnie and Hook study the map, trying to find a passage to the tribe of Indians. Peter and Aya give the pirates a clue as the girl drives her mate to the secret passage. The brigands watch them through a spyglass. The pirates follow Peter's footsteps, but the boy, engrossed in the story of his orphan life, does not notice the surveillance. Having stopped for the night, Peter plays a familiar melody on the flute, and at this sound the forest fairy arrives. She gives a signal, and the young men hurry after the fairy, hoping she will lead them to the man in the cloak. As the sun rises, a wall appears in front of the travelers, and Peter climbs it and sees a city made of roots and tree trunks. The city appears empty, but later a man in a cloak appears in front of the friends, and Peter recognizes him as Dr. Flood. The old man admits that he is the one who created the glass ball, but he promises to bring the teens home and put an end to uncontrolled travel to this world. Flood tells the travelers how he accidentally opened a portal between planets at different ends of the universe. The old man shows the guests the laboratory and introduces them to his assistant, the fairy Tinkerbell, who showed the teens the way to the city. Dr. Flood opens a chest with a glass ball and invites Peter outside to carry it home. But the unexpected ringing of a bell changes the professor's plans. There are uninvited guests in town, and the old man needs to meet them. Flood invites the pirates and Hook into the Great Hall, hoping to settle everything peacefully. He suggests that the guests return to the real Earth, but Bonnie realizes that in the new time, she cannot be queen of the seas. Threatening with a gun, Elizabeth demands that the old man hand over the orb to her, but Flood turns into a hologram and disappears. The inventor asks the pirates to leave the city, but the brigands open fire on his images and the hall goes up in flames. Noticing Peter, Jimmy tries to stop him, but the boy runs after Dr. Flood and together with the old man, he watches the city built thousands of years ago burn. Flood asks Peter to save the orb while he tries to stop the pirates, but nothing comes of it. Bonnie destroys the professor and sends Hook after the boy to get the orb. Peter tries to confront Jimmy, but the mentor proves to be stronger. Hook asks the boy to stop and confesses to him that years ago he promised his mother to take care of the boy. Bonnie interrupts the men's conversation. The captain notices the balloon and grabs it, but even then she does not let Peter escape, demanding that he give her the tiger lily and show her the way to the forest spirits. The chief's daughter promises to tell the whole truth to save Peter, but the boy does not let her do it. He throws himself on Elizabeth's saber and dies. Dozens of fairies carry Peter's body through the woods. Thinking he's dead, Hook briefly mourns the lad, after which he hatches a plan to capture the forest fairy so he can return to London and win his place in high society. The fairies lower Peter into a lake of magic dust, and the lad immediately comes back to life. Tinkerbell congratulates the lad, informing him that he is now just like them, but the elders explain to Peter that they need his help in return using his ability to fly. He must steal an orb for them so that all those stuck in this world can return home. The elders lift the guy off the ground and show him the suffering of their world, which he can end by returning the orb. Meanwhile, Jimmy finally turns into a pirate, and to bolster his authority, he fights Starkey. Not knowing that the traitor has become stronger, Peter learns to fly in order to be on the ship sooner. All night long, the guy is tormented by nightmares about the past days and the events he had to live through. 
Not waiting for the morning, Peter goes to the ship and having frightened the pirates, he demands that they return the glass sphere and bring him the tiger lily. But the sailors can't help the guy Bonnie has hidden the magic orb on an abandoned island, and the girl is leading the pirates to a secret passage through a giant spider's web. Having freed his friend, Peter returns to the web to finish off the pirates, but not noticing the spider he himself is trapped and captured. Bringing him to the ship, Bonnie orders the boy to be cured of his spider bite so he can tell her the secret of the magic dust. Aya makes it to the tribe, and after a little rest, she tells Peter's friends what happened to them. After listening to the girl, the friends begin to argue about whether they should go to Peter's aid or whether they should leave things as they are. Curly is most opposed to Peter, and to show his friends his strength, the teenager is going to lead a crocodile hunt. Curly can't defeat the giant reptile alone, but his friends and tribe members come to his aid. When the Indians are cutting up the prey in the evening, Curly walks away, realizing his mistake. Jimmy realizes that Bonnie will not spare him or Peter, and he rescues the lad, promising to bring him home. When the guy finally comes to his senses, Hook assures him that they have broken away from the pirates, and now they just need to find a way out. Trusting his old friend, Peter leads him to a secret passage through the cliff, and talking about his mother distracts the boy even more. He only realizes he has been betrayed when Hook turns off the guard and an army of pirates appears behind him. The rebels march into the forest fairy's territory, and Bonnie orders the forest to be set on fire to frighten the magical creatures and keep them from flying away. Hook orders Peter to take them to the source, promising to do more harm to the fairies if he refuses. While Peter leads the army to the spring, the Indians gather an army to protect the magical creatures. They don't make it in time, Captain Bonnie sheds her costume and dives into the spring, following Peter's instructions. But she manages to be a fairy for only seconds, Elizabeth's black heart causes her to shatter into millions of pieces and turn to ash. Out of anger, Hook is about to destroy Peter, confessing that he once also destroyed his father. But at that time, Indians appear and arrows stop the pirates. A brutal battle begins in the forest, and only the appearance of the chief forces Hook to retreat and lead his army away. The elders of the fairies find Peter in the forest and inform him of the punishment for betrayal they will erase the boy's memory, and he will never again remember neither himself, nor his friends, nor joyful emotions. Betrayal, pain, and loss are now his companions until the end of time. Tinker tries to protect the boy, but it turns out to be too late. Besides, for disobedience, the fairy is kicked out of the Brotherhood of Fairies, and Tinker Bell is left alone with the maddened Peter. Fairy turns to Tiger Lily for help, and the girl brings Peter to the camp, begging his father to save him. But the Indians no longer believe the traitor, and the chief orders to put the boy in a pit. The pirates try to oppose Hook, but he manages to defend his honor by persuading his accomplices to go with him to London for profit. Peter's friends decide to violate the chief's orders and rescue their friend, but none of them the guy does not recognize. To bring the buddy to his senses, the company has to tie him up and Curly comes up with an idea he plays familiar tunes on his flute and they bring back Peter's memories. Peter leaves his friends in a safe place and himself goes after the pirates in search of the glass ball. He manages to overhear a conversation and the guy hurries to the tribe to warn the Indians about the plans of the brigands, but Aya no longer believes her friend and Peter flies away. The intruders are brought back to camp and they tell the chief about Peter's plans to retrieve the orb. The elder suggests closing the passage, but Curly assures him that if Hook returns with modern weapons, it will not save the Indians. The chief orders the men to go to Peter's aid to prevent disaster and the company of friends sets off with them. Meanwhile, Hook leads the first band of outlaws into the cave to go with him to London, not knowing that a battle is already beginning on the water. The pirate is about to strike the balloon, but Peter rushes to stop the traitor and a duel begins between them. Struggling to cope alone, Peter circles around the group of pirates, preventing them from being transported to another world. The bandits manage to catch the flying guy in a snare, but his friends come to his aid and having broken free, Peter mourns the fallen Tinkerbell and continues to fight Hook, depriving him of his arm. The pirate manages to disable Peter for a second and he flies down to the dangerous river, but at the last moment the guy opens his eyes. The shooting and fights cause the cave to start collapsing. Peter's friends run outside, but the guy stays inside to lift Tinkerbell's body and retrieve the glass orb. As rocks cover the exit, Aya tells her friends that Peter stayed inside. 
The Indians say goodbye to the bodies of the dead, while Hook and Starks decide how they will get out of the cave. In the tribe, everyone returns to their usual life, and Aya gives the guys oars to find something to do and somehow adapt to the unusual world. But suddenly, the friend's attention is attracted by a familiar flute melody. Peter appears before the company wearing a fresh suit from London and souvenirs for friends. He confesses that the sphere no longer exists, and no one else will disturb the life of the forest spirits, but they will stay here forever. Hearing this, the friends agree that it is for the best in this world. They will forever remain children, and incredible adventures await them.